Monthly car payments are up. Repo rates are through the roof. Dealers are still asking over 7% over MSRP on average, yet for consumers like you and me, well, we're weeks away from getting deals on new and used cars that we haven't seen in years. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how and why. Like, subscribe, and let's go. Okay, so the average monthly car payment on a new car is up in 2024 in the United States to an eye-watering $735 per month. That's only a $10 increase per month from last year, which was $725 per month, but that's over $100 per year extra. And yeah, that increase makes car ownership more expensive. I mean, just check out this chart. The average monthly payment for a new car is, yeah, 735 bucks. And for a used car, it's 523. Loan amounts for new cars is 40,634, where used cars, it's about $26,073. Interest rates on average for new cars is 6.73% and a pretty high 11.91% for used cars. Now, loan term rates are roughly the same at 37 months per, but people buying new cars have a way higher credit score of 755, while used car buyers on average have a credit score of 686. Now guys, these rising car payments are thanks to an increase in vehicle costs, which we all know are influenced by factors like inflation, supply chain disruptions, and heightened demand. And even though demand has decreased recently, very few dealerships are willing to actually give buyers a deal under MSRP on a new car. But we'll touch on that in just a second, because first up, we have to talk about interest rates. Okay, can we just admire this graph for two seconds? It's the interest rates on a 60 month new car loan in the United States from February of 2014, all the way up to April of 2024. And your eyes aren't deceiving you, as you can see from 2014 up until roughly December of 2021, which was actually the lowest of lows of 3.85%, that seven year or so time frame was relatively flat then right after that low of 3.85%, oh, we get hit with higher and higher and higher interest rates, which almost reach 8% on average for new vehicles. Now, we'll talk about how much dealers are charging over MSRP on average, but the issue with the higher interest rates, well, it also affects the broader economy because well, when consumers spend more on car payments, they naturally have less money to spend on other goods and services, which will ultimately slow the economic growth. Now this extra strain will be on your or my budget because more of your income goes to your car payment and it increases repossession rates, which have kept increasing rapidly. But before we show you that data, let's talk a little bit more about how much over MSRP dealerships are still charging. It's absurd. I can't believe this, or well, maybe I can. According to iccars.com, the average new car price is priced 7.2% above MSRP, which yes, it is a drop from last year of 8.9% over MSRP, but it's still way too high on average. Now, the top five cars priced above MSRP are the Mini Hardtop, the Taycan Sedan, the Cayenne, the Macan, and the Taycan Wagon. So essentially you get four Porsches and a Mini. Fantastic. Now, it's time to get excited folks because here are the top five cars priced below MSRP, and they're four not great EVs, and uh, one's the Hyundai Kona, the Volkswagen ID4, the Kia EV6, and the Hyundai Ioniq 6. And to round it out, you have a hybrid truck that no one wants, the Ford F-150 Hybrid. Now, a year ago, the average new car price was 45,597 bucks. But today, just a year later, the average new car price is 45,880, which equates to that 7.2% over MSRP. So even though it's down this year, the overall average new car MSRP has increased $904 in the past year, but the average dealer pricing has only increased by less than 300. So while unfortunately cars are continuing to get more and more expensive, dealers, well, they've done us a little win by not jacking up prices as much as they did last year. So small win for us consumers. So if you'd like to see this awesome graph from IC cars outlining the differences in average new car price from a year ago to today, to everything from gas cars, to hybrid vehicles, to EVs, to SUVs, trucks, and sedans, pause this video here to check it out, okay? We're gonna move on. So people really don't have a choice to not pay over MSRP for a vehicle that they actually want to buy. Well, yeah because no one wants a hybrid truck or an electric vehicle that has subpar range. Then you take into account the interest rates that are just through the sunroof and you have the perfect recipe for disaster, AKA 
repossession. Now, the down and dirty reason why a car gets repossessed. When you buy a car with a loan, it's like borrowing a toy from a friend. You promise to give them some of your allowance money every single month to play with that toy. But if you stop giving them that allowance, a friend is going to come back and take that toy back because, well, you didn't hold up your end of the bargain. And when we take a look at car repossession statistics for the United States over the last couple of years, as you can see, there were 1.2 million vehicles repossessed in 2022, and then an increase of 300,000 vehicles to 1.5 million in 2023. Now, the key thing to note is actually the subprime delinquencies of 60 plus days, which was 6.11%. That is a 30 year high. That is not good. And for 2024, repossession rates are on the rise even more because more and more vehicle owners fall behind on their loan payments. So this is definitely going to get worse before it gets better. Okay. Remember we talked about how when you have higher interest rates and car costs more, you have a lower budget for other things like insurance, which you just have to have. Yep, as interest rates increased, we can see that auto insurance even adjusted for inflation has increased pretty much 15% in the last year. So that's just more money out of your pocket. Also, let's take a look at how much new car prices have increased in the past few years. Looking at this graph from Cox Automotive, the new vehicle transaction price in 2024 is on average 47,401, which we know has gone down just slightly in the last month or so. But let's take a step back to 2020, you know, before the pandemic, when the average new car price was roughly 39,000. Meaning in just the past four short years, MSRPs have gone up over 21% for new vehicles on average. Now, where this really gets to be a difficult pill to swallow is that with a lot of car models, the technology hasn't really changed over the last four years at all or that much. I mean, back in 2019, the starting MSRP for one of my favorite JDM cars ever was 99,990 bucks which is a lot, but that's pretty much $100,000. And now let's fast forward to 2024, and the starting price for an R35 GTR is $120,990, which can you believe that? That's essentially exactly 21% more over a four or five year period. Yet for the base models, there is very little, if anything, that has changed or been updated, meaning you're essentially getting the same car five years later, but having to pay 20 plus percent more, yeah, that hurts. Now, let's take a look at some black book data to get an idea of what you can expect in the next few months. On the far right of the graph, you can see a little peak in April of 2024, and it has been trending downwards ever since. What that means is that the prices that dealer acquired cars at auction is continuing to go down, which means if they pay less for the car at wholesale, they're going to ask less for it when it comes to selling it to you or me. Now, if we revisit this graph of the average new car transaction price, you can see that it too is starting to trend downwards since that high in late 2022. Now, let's take a look at a different graph and show you the used car segment today, which fell by 0.34% over the past week, with subcompact cars falling 0.77% and luxury cars falling 0.71% in just a week. Which, are you picking up what I'm throwing down? Yes, it means that we are all about to win as consumers. Because here's retail listings for two to six year old vehicles, and the ARC is definitely trending downwards. And that's while the average national supply of new vehicle inventory has hit 80 days this year, the highest it's been since June of 2020. So we're gonna see a buyer's market within a month, and you gotta be prepared with a few simple tricks that has helped me to get the best deals on buying new and used cars over the past couple of years. So before you visit the dealership, you wanna research and compare prices. Use online tools and websites like Kelly Blue Book, Edmunds, and TrueCar. These will help you compare prices to the models that you're interested in. And you're gonna to wanna to check out both new and used car prices to understand the market value. Also, check up on dealer inventory. You'll wanna look at multiple dealerships inventory online. High supply means dealers may be more willing to negotiate to move their stock. Plus, I can't say this enough, get pre-approved for financing. Getting pre-approved for a loan from your bank or credit union usually it's going to be a lower rate than what they're going to give you at the dealership. Plus, it is just a benchmark for your interest rate and loan terms to compare with that dealer's offer. And know your credit score. Did you know that you can check your credit score for free? Yeah, your credit score is going to impact the interest rate you qualify for. So check your score in advance and understand what range of interest rates you should expect. Now, you're ready to do some business. You're at the dealership. 
want to negotiate on the price first. Focus on negotiating the vehicle's price before discussing financing. A lower purchase price will reduce the total amount you need to finance, and always be prepared to walk away. Dealers hate this one trick, and essentially if they're not willing to meet you for the price that you want to pay for the vehicle, well then tell them that you're going to go somewhere else because they won't negotiate with you. This works especially well if they have excess inventory. So know how much inventory they actually have. And look for dealer incentives. You know, dealers, they offer incentives, rebates, and discounts on certain models to move inventory. So ask about any current promotions or special offers. You might be surprised. And one of my favorite tricks is just buying the car at the end of the month because dealers are more often to negotiate at the end of the month to meet sales targets and quotas. Now, let's talk about the negotiation specifically. You can negotiate interest rates. Yes, once you've agreed upon a price, negotiate the interest rate. Compare the dealer's financing offer with your pre-approved loan and ask the dealer to match or beat that rate. Dealers make money if you finance through them, so they're always trying to match or beat it if they can. Also, additional fees, keep a Hawkeye on these because dealers might add them to the contract. If you see something on there that you don't understand, ask the dealer to explain what it is because a lot of times they put excessive or unnecessary stuff on your contract and once you sign it, well, it's yours. Okay, now it's time to finalize the deal for the new to you car. Read through and read through again every detail of the sales contract before signing and ensure the terms match what you agreed upon, including the price, interest rate, and any additional perks. And if you don't love the interest rate that you're locked into, consider refinancing later. Sometimes you're gonna have to accept a higher interest rate to get a deal done, especially with current market conditions. It may be a little bit higher than favorable but you can always refinance. So if rates ever go down in the future, well, you can lock in those new rates and it'll be less per month. Also, a couple other additional top tips. The first one is I always drive multiple vehicles. You're gonna wanna drive different models to ensure that you're getting the car that best suits your needs and preferences. For example, if you're looking for something like a Lexus RX 350, a nice SUV, well, you're gonna wanna also test drive a BMW X5 and maybe something like a Toyota Crown Signia because, well, you never know, you might end up liking one more. And if you cross shop, you won't have buyer remorse after the fact once you buy one. Also, trade-in value. If you do have a trade-in, you're gonna wanna research its value separately and negotiate the trade-in value separately from the purchase price of the new or used car after, and I repeat, after you settle on the price of the new car that you're buying. This is my favorite tool to use. It's the Car Guru's What My Car Is Worth calculator, and you just plug in the make, model, trim, etc., and well, you see what your fair market value is. That gives you a lot of data to go in there and negotiate like a pro and understand exactly what you're getting yourself into, how much the new car is worth, as well as your trade-in is worth as well. So do you think the car market's gonna shift soon that the buyers actually have the advantage? I sure do. So let us know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this vid, like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Check out some of these ideal vids up here. I'm Brad, the Financial Cowboy. This is Ideal. We'll see you next week. And promise me one thing, keep living the ideal lifestyle.